Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to work on our, uh, our 1976 D100. Uh, and today's episode is all about some torque flight love. So our little truck here is equipped with a 727 torque flight. That's kind of odd behind a slant six. You don't see those every day. Um, the vast majority of slant sixes got 904s behind them, but stuff that was um, fleet, um, like taxi cabs, police cars, um, and stuff like this, uh, not this truck, but the chassis of this truck that would have been ordered as a fleet truck, that they would have been able to option up to the 727 transmission over the 904. So um, uh, that's that's how this one is equipped. Now, what you'll find with these things when they get old, um, you'll find a few things like the the linkage starts to get a little bit a little bit vague, um, stuff like that. You'll also find that. Um, you leave the thing parked for a couple of days, and this is something that this thing suffers from. And the torque converter drains back. So you start the thing up, and you put it in drive, and nothing happens. Because um, you're waiting for the torque converter to fill before the thing will go. Um, these torque flights have a little bit of a unique thing in that they don't pump fluid to the converter when it's in park. If you pull it into neutral... It'll fill the compute the converter up quickly and then you can go. But whoever thinks to do that. Um, and a particular issue that this one has is the one two shift is kind of mushy and the two to three shift has got quite a bang to it. So we're gonna have a go at that. I've got some parts over there on the bench. What we're gonna do is we're gonna service it. We're gonna make sure the bands are adjusted properly, we're gonna make sure the kick down is adjusted properly. We're going to make sure the linkage is all nice and tight and operating as, as well as we can have it operate. There will be wear in the steering column here, and there will be wear in the, in the actual shift post on the valve body um, that's kind of difficult to overcome. But we're going to tighten everything up as best as we can. Let's get started. So here's our stuff that we're going to need for this job. We've got a, um, a service kit, a gasket and filter. We've got a shift kit we're going to be putting in. I'll show you how to do that and explain what it does. And these are our um, bushings for the linkage. And I've got a new selector seal and a kick down shaft seal, I think. I think I've got a kick down shaft seal in there um, because this transmission leaks like a bugger. And we got to fix that. So here's the bottom of our transmission. You can see the fluid running off it. Um, where it's leaking is anybody's guess. I kind of get a feeling it's the neutral switch here. You can pull that, you pull that off, and, and they will leak between between the the cartridge and the case where it's crimped together. There should be a seal in there, and they will leak there. They'll also leak here from the the, the manual selector seal, and inside that shaft is another shaft, which is the 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 kick down shaft. And, and that seal will leak too. The leak is definitely coming from this side and it, and it runs down all around and it drips all over the floor and makes a heck of a mess. So anyway, we're gonna start by getting the pan off and this one doesn't have a drain plug in, which sometimes on fleet stuff, you'll find a drain plug in the, in the transmission pans, but uh, this one doesn't have one. So we're just gonna go around and take all the bolts out and get her draining. So we've got the oil pan down, the filter off, it's just held on with three screws. Now we've gone and taken off the, the kick down lever and the shift lever. You can see there, there's the, the two, that's the shift linkage and that's the kick down, sorry, that's the shift linkage and that's the kick down linkage. We'll adjust that all up after. Now we got to grab a big wrench and get the neutral switch out of here. All right, now pulling these valve bodies down, and this is the same whether it's a 727 or a 904. The valve body is pretty much the same in both of them. Um, you take 
any bolts you see with 7 16 heads on them, there's uh, three across here, three across there, and four around the kick down servo. You need to take those out, and then the valve body comes down. It comes down and kind of goes forward because you've got to get the park rod that goes back there to pull the park ball. It, it, it's got to come down, and you have to get the, the selector shaft down out of that bore. Now, um, the trick to doing this on this is because this slant six, the, the front, the exhaust pipe crosses over kind of right where I have to do this. So, um, yeah, we're going to see how this goes. The kick down band here, you can see how far out of adjustment this thing is. It's flopping all over the place. So we're going to go ahead and adjust that up. That'll improve our 1-2 shift greatly. We'll also adjust the low reverse band. Procedure is the same for adjusting either one of them. Uh, you loosen the... Where is it? There it is right there. You loosen that jam nut and you tighten the adjusting screw to 72 foot-pounds and then back it out the specified amount. Um, on this one... For the kick down band, it's two and a half turns. That's pretty much right across the board, except on the 440, and they want you to back it out two turns. And the, the low reverse band is two turns on all of them backed out. So we're going to go ahead and adjust those, and I'll be back when I'm done. So we've got our band tightened up to 72 inch pounds. And you can see it's just about touching. This band is just about wore out. The drum's not all chewed up or nothing, so it's just worn out. Now what we got to do is come over here and uh, find our adjuster screw. And we'll back that off. The book says two and a half turns. I might do two and a quarter. We'll, we'll see. It's, it's, it's just kind of a... The book is the, you know, that that for it to be good in every situation thing so it, you can kind of tweak with it a little bit anyway let me do that all right i ended up setting it at two and a quarter turns back another thing you can do with these um this here is your kick down clutch apply lever and there's many different many different ratios you can get on these most of the ones you'll find are are in the in the threes like a 3.5 or, or a 3.8 is one that comes to mind. And then what we used to all do on our street cars back in the day, we'd put, change this to a, a five a five to one lever or a, a Hemi kick down lever, we call it, because that's what they used in, in Hemi cars. And, and anytime you were doing up a torque flight, uh, but you have to have it out to do that because the, the pin that this thing runs on goes through and it and it's held by a by a plug in behind the torque converter so the transmission has to be out of the car to do that but um for what we're doing here this ought to be just fine now we'll adjust the the low reverse band it's the same thing tighten it to 72 and back it off two turns now that the bands are adjusted we're going to change the uh, selector shaft seal that's pretty easy to do. You just knock the old one up and out with a screwdriver and the new one goes in from the top. And sometimes if you got enough room, I might be okay with this one. You, you might be able to tap around it with a hammer and get it in. Um, otherwise, you just use a, a bolt with a couple of big washers and you just draw it in. This here, um, although when I'm under there, it, it seems like there's not a lot of room, but I've done all these jobs on like a a 340 duster with dual exhaust and a torque flight 727 jammed in that little valiant body that's tight this isn't so bad at all all right now this thing is ready to go up in a uh, few tricks you put this in uh, that way manual low so the the park rod gets all the way in before you before you put it up or as you put it up um, I also put some grease around the, the tower here so it goes easily through the seal. I put a little grease on the, the cam there for the neutral switch. 
and I put a little grease on the, the rooster comb in the ball just to help us that first if we have to move it a little bit before it actually sees fluid and I used a blob of grease to kind of glue the accumulator spring in so it doesn't fall out while we're under there wrestling with this thing. Well that seems like a good enough can angle to try and catch this with the camera so long as I don't wipe everything up. And now the cooler lines have started to drip. This thing's been sitting out here for three days and it didn't drip, now it's dripping. Oh, well, here goes nothing, eh? Oh, well, maybe I got this backwards. Put it in park. There we go. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Now I get, get one screw in. I think I just moved the camera, but it'll have to stay like that until I get this one screw in. All right, next we're gonna put the filter up. Now, another thing we would do, if we were really gonna be working this thing, like towing big trailers or pushing snow or, or even racing, um, we would put on a deep pan, which is, I don't know, the, the normal pan is basically here. The deep pan comes down to here, and it actually has a filter extension that comes with it that puts the, the basically the pickup, which the filter is, right down into the bottom of the pan. And I would also install um, an inline an inline filter. So uh, you just pick the, the tranny cooler line, the out one, and you put... Um, um, on a remote filter head and an oil filter from a car on it and that will catch any little bits and pieces that, that get through this thing. But what I'm going to do next is before I put the pan on we're going to screw our new neutral safety switch in and make sure it works. Okay now we're going to check the neutral switch to make sure it, it's actually working. So how these things work is the, the center one here touches the ground when it's in park and neutral to ground the starter relay. So right now it's in park. We have continuity. So it will go through reverse, reverse, neutral. We should have continuity there. Yes. Now in between them, in reverse, we should have continuity between the two outers. Yes, okay, so that's all working. We can go ahead and close this thing up. So now we can go ahead and put the pan up. I managed in all my um, excellent used stuff to find a pan that I already at some point in the past put a drain plug in. So oh, that's good. And we just go around. So there we go. And we'll just go around. You just kind of, you can torque these if you want, but we just go around like this and kind of just make sure they're tight. Last things we have to do, um, I went ahead and made sure the drain plug is tight. Now I have to uh, get the cooler lines back on and we'll start working on the linkage and I'll show you how to adjust all of that.
This here is the kick down link from the bell crank at the top down to the lever on the transmission. We need this to be free to be able to adjust it properly. Well, uh, they're never free. There you go. Just had to hold it better. It's free now. So I'll just work it back and forth and get the bolt out and we'll get everything cleaned up. This here is the rod for the shifter and it's got the same type of adjuster. We're going to see, see this one uh, is free, so that's good. So we'll just um, take that apart and clean it all up and we can put it in. Then we'll be able to adjust that perfectly. All right. Now we're going to work on the actual, um, the cross shaft of the shifter. Oh. You can see here, this end, the chassis end, doesn't have a lot of play in it. This end here has a ton, a lot of play. So luckily, I've got one of these bushings new that I got somewhere. So it doesn't have quite as much play. There is a little bit of wear on the shaft. Um, so we're going to replace uh, this bushing here, and we'll put this all back together back in the truck. Yeah, that's way better. Perfect. Okay, now we'll get underneath there and put all this stuff back together. We're going to start by adjusting the column shift linkage. So what we've done here is we've got the, the transmission in neutral, and we got this right there. The column shift is in neutral too. So we just get that like that, and pop it in there we go you can see it's right at the end of the rod um, I would say that means that this has got some pretty decent body mounts in it it's lifted the cab up a tiny bit but um, it doesn't matter it may be at the end of the adjustment but it's it's still good it's safe like there's still a little bit sticking out the other side so we caught it now I'll go upstairs and make sure it shifts nice now we're going to adjust the kick down linkage. I've already adjusted it, but I'll show you how you do it. It's really hard to see on these six cylinder cars, but this here is the kick down rod in behind, and this here is your throttle cable. So what you're going to do is, is that's the rod going down to the transmission down there. So you're going to manually hold the throttle wide open, and when the throttle's wide open, make sure you can still just have just a tiny little bit left on that. And then you're golden. It's really important that you that you get this right because that is also um, that also controls the main pressure and the lube pressure. And if you run these things without a kick down on them, you will fry the transmission. You'll destroy it. So it's very important to have this on there and mostly hooked up properly. Now the only thing I've got to figure out with this is it should have a pullback spring on it. But because we've got a bit of a, um, a mismatch, um, the carburetor and the linkage don't exactly match. So I can't really get the, get the spring on that holds this back. So we'll have to work on that. But anyway, for now, at least it's adjusted. There we go. So there's the adjuster there. You just loosen that, that uh, cinch bolt or grub screw, whatever you want to call it. You make your adjustment and then you tighten it down. So this is adjusted pretty well. You could still tune it a little bit. If you think it's a little too sensitive, you could turn it down a bit. But there just has to be something on there. If you're just hacking around, you know, like what we used to do on the demo derby cars, we would just wire this all the way back. I've done that on stock cars too. You just wire it all the way back and then you've got full line pressure all the time. So when she shifts, she shifts. Luckily, at the junkyard the other day, we were able to find a truck with a slant six in it and get the right um, little clip and spring that we needed for our kick down uh, to have the correct return spring on it. So that, that's good. That's all working perfectly now.
I had to go at the steering column and most of the play is the at the bottom of it there's a bushing where the um, where the the link goes through it's the only place on this truck because it's a mishmash of different years of parts where it still has a, a rubber bushing with a pin and a cotter pin and it's loose and I doubt you can even get the parts anymore the only way you could really solve the problem would be to put a later model steering column that used the grommet style and that would take up that bit of play but it's not really that bad now since we fixed that um, that lever inside the transmission I, I got it running I got the fluid topped up so now we're just going to give it a little spin here and see how the transmission works Got a nice shift in the second gear. I think the kick down might be turned up a little much. It seems to kind of wind out before it shifts into second. But it's hard to say because the little six cylinder engine, it, it's working hard to move this truck around, you know. They work hard moving a Valiant around. So I've turned down the kick down a little bit and we'll see if it, um, shifts a little sooner and a little less violently that was like uh at part throttle i was getting a wide open throttle shift so let's see what we get now well there you go our transmission is all straightened out that that little tweak i did on the on the kick down i just moved the adjuster uh, like three sixteenths of an inch made all the difference in the world brought the the part throttle shift points down um into a much more comfortable zone and it just tone down the shift uh, a little bit. It's good now. But when I get on it and the throttle pressure uh, lever goes back, it shifts snappy like it's supposed to. Quite happy with it. Um, anyway, the next thing we're going to do is a little work under the hood here in our next video. I hope you'll come back to watch that. Until then, thanks for tuning in. And we'll catch you next time on the Claremont Classic Garage. So long.